Hello, everybody. This is Mike McCormick, and I have a very special guest uh, that I'll be speaking with today. Um, you know, these days I hear cries for an inspiring woman. I know I sure could use an inspiring woman. So if you want an inspiring <laughs> woman, I've got one for you. Not only is she a survivor of the film business, she survived stunts in films and TV series such as Charlie's Angels, Airwolf, Airport 77, Jaws 2, Hujo, and she's also a veteran of uh, the Star Trek films and the top shelf as far as I'm concerned in the uh, stunt business, the James Bond series. In fact, she survived car chases, fires, falls, fights, horses. She's been chased by lions. She's been attacked by mechanical sharks. So I must ask, Jean Coulter, how are you today? I'm fantastic. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, I have grown up watching you on screen, and um, as a stunt performer, you, you, you probably don't get a lot of the credit that uh, you deserve. It's always going towards the lead actors and whatnot, but stunt performers actually really make the excitement happen. And uh, so it's kind of like uh, I'm, a, I'm a composer. So sometimes composers are, are contributing a little bit uh, uh, to the undercurrent of excitement. And uh, Absolutely. And uh, I just think looking at, at your roster of films, I believe there's, I see over 80 credits. Um, I just think you are actually a legend in, in, in the stunt community. And um, I, I, I think there should be documentaries about you, books about you. I think it's just really exciting what you've managed to do. And you were making movies in, in the heyday. Uh, I think some of the best <laughs> films were made in the 70s and 80s. And um, when you were growing up, were there any indications that you were going to go this direction in your life? Well, I kind of felt like I'd be in the business because my whole family was in it. So I kind of felt that that's what I would probably do. I, I it, in the beginning, started acting when I was like three years old. We were doing commercials and things like that. But then when I turned 18, I went back into the business and I saw some people doing stunt work one day, and I said, you know what? I said, I really want to do that because I'm really an outdoors person. I never liked being indoors or working inside an office. So for me, that was just perfect, you know. And do you, hap do you happen to recall your, your first stunt or or how you uh, oh, moved I do. into this uh, <laughs> Could you tell us about that? Yeah, I do. I do. I had a friend that was producing this show, uh, Emergency, quite oh, yeah. a long time ago. And um, I had to come out of a burning building, uh, and that was my first job, and I flew through the air onto the ground. And that was my first job, and I remember my friend said, I was so worried I couldn't even watch you do it. He said, I had to go back to my office. And so that was my first job, and it even made me want to do it more, you know, because people clapped, and I thought that was stupid. But <laughs> it worked, and I really loved it. It's a good right, feeling. Right, right. So did, did you kind of get like an adrenaline rush or... Oh, yeah. Uh, uh huh. You do. Yeah. Right before you do any stunt, your heart starts pounding and you get all that adrenaline, which is excellent, you know. So, oh, yes. <laughs> you do. Especially on some of the harder stuff, you know. Your heart really Absolutely. starts moving. So, <laughs> it's a good thing, though, because it gives you the energy. Did your parents approve of your your choice of uh, oh. occupation? <laughs> No, <laughs> they didn't. My father was the head over the art department at Warner Brothers, and I was working there. And I said, Dad, do you want to come down and watch me work? He said, no, honey. He said, I never wanted you to do it, so I certainly don't want to watch it. <laughs> so he wouldn't even come down. My other sister was an actress, so she had, you know, her acting at the studios, and Dad would go and watch her, but he didn't want to see me get hurt. So I understand that. He wanted me to be an artist like him. And uh, I never wanted to do that, even though I'm good at it. 
so that's for my dad, you know. He never did. I don't think he saw any of my shows, really. None of them. Did I, in fact, my whole family hasn't. They don't know what I did. I mean, they know what I did, but they don't really have an interest in it. My sister was a big star, and, and they went through all of that, too. So for me to do stunt work, they really didn't think that was great because they didn't want to see me hurt, you know, so. You know, I guess prior to uh, female stunt performers, like, did, did we have, a, like, men wearing wigs? Is that typically oh, what we they did. were doing? <laughs> we certainly did, yeah. And, and that's what we had to fight against, you know, is the guys putting on the wigs. Because at that time it was pretty, pretty prominent that the men were doubling women, and it was us that came in, and they didn't think we could do the work. They didn't think we should do the work because they don't want to see a woman hurt. So sure. that was a whole thing to get over, you know. And I didn't want to take jobs away from men. Definitely were doing that, so they weren't really happy. But the guys were always so nice to me. You know, I just made friends with all of them. So they ended up helping me more than disliking me for taking their job. But sure. <laughs> it was different in those days. We we still, and even now the girls are fighting the guys putting on wigs and doing the job. Because so many women are so capable of now of doing the stunts. Um, and I think the men just have to get over it. We get hurt, and that's the way it is. And we recover just like they do, you know. So sure, that sure. that was that was a, a hard time. Well, Which sure. everything, um, even getting the jobs hard, you know. Yes, it can, it's, it's a tough business. I certainly understand. Um, yes, the thing about me though is, I went in and I was little. And most of the women that were working at the time, which there weren't very many, were kind of bigger, bigger, you know, more muscles and and bigger. Me, it was perfect coming in because I fit the girls on Charlie's Angels and all the, you know, actresses out there. So it worked really well for me. That's great. Um, You know, when you you mention women today performing stunts, um, it seems like, these days, there's more reliance on technology for the tough stuff. Is that true, or uh-huh. or, or, the, or, or do you do you do you think there's plenty of opportunity like like you experienced in in the stunt world? Yeah, I still think there's a lot of opportunity because there's more venues for the shows to be seen. So I think there's a lot more shows being shot all over the world. And at the time we were doing it, it was just really Hollywood was the place, you know, although England, of course, uh, was doing their films. But I think that we had the market pretty pretty much tied up, and then, you know, years later it starts spreading around the world. So there's not so much work in Hollywood as there is in other countries. So uh, it's definitely changed. And I think they do, uh, you know, the, the work in the studios – on on green screen and things like that, but they still they still go out and do the hard stunts because my girlfriend uh, Debbie Evans is one of the top drivers in in the business, and she uh, did the Fast and Fury shows. She's the best, and I remember awesome. I gave her her first job <laughs> on Charlie's Angels when she came in. Oh, she wow. was unbelievable. Yeah, she's unbelievable, and she's probably I don't know. 50 something. I'm not sure, but she's still doing the hard stuff. Hard to replace um, her. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, I guess it's hard to find people that, that'll do some of these, these stunts. You know, when we talk about all the productions nowadays, and there does seem to be so much more media with streaming and so many different shows, could that also be problematic where a lot of these are low budget situations? Like we could end up with situations like we had last year with uh, the Alec Baldwin. Uh, prop yes. uh, issue. Is, is that a concern for a stunt re- uh, performer if it's a kind of a low budget uh, venture? Well, of course, but you know, if they're 
if they're a union, usually you have all the union people working with you. And that's a good thing because they know the rules and regulations. They know what they can do and they can't do. But with low budget shows, they'll hire people that really aren't aware of what's going on that much. So uh, they do things that they shouldn't do, like the gun should never be given out. It should be one person takes care of the gun. And um, there's some really strict rules now about that, but they they just didn't do that, you know. That's why it happened. Mm-hmm. So I, I so always just, work union. If you sure. if you take a job working non union, you can get kicked out of the union. It's not worth it. You know. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Um, if you're a union person and you go take a non union job, that's a no no. We can't do that. I guess it also just adds to the danger element of what you're doing, too, just because you might not have uh, the experienced crew that, that you would need. But uh, onward to uh, to better days here in, in, in your, your heyday, uh, we, we should say. <laughs> now, you were, would you say Charlie's Angels was your first, like, big gig to where you're like, okay, now I'm I'm really going here? Pretty much, yeah. I I would say that because when I walked in, I was doubling all the girls, not just one, all of them in the same day. It was incredible. And I could do the hard stuff. So I was in. I was in like Flynn. That that made it, you know. And then my work just keeps snowballing. I, I worked every day practically, so so it really went crazy. Um, I was doing hard work, though, you know, jumping out of cars and hitting the ground a lot. It was hard, hard stuff to do. So, when you were um, recruited for that, had was was there a a stunt or someone had seen your work in other films and just said, "Well, well, here, here, here's our stunt person," um, well, or was it yeah. more that you mm-hmm. more that you resembled? Uh, uh, the angels themselves that that helped contribute to your your recruitment. Well, it was definitely fifty fifty because the girls mm-hmm. they don't want to see somebody that's you know overweight or big muscular woman. They want to see somebody thin like them. So if you walked on the set and you didn't fit them, the girls would race heck and say, "No, I want somebody else doubling me." So uh, for me, it worked out great. Because I could double all of them. In fact, they could shoot me from the side of my face for Cheryl and and uh, Farah. And even when I was doing heart to heart, they shot me really close up for Stephanie because my face was so much like hers. So that helped me too. You know, looking like the side side profile of my jawline worked for me. So. Well, that's great. That's yeah. that's great. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I guess yes. If you, if you were a star on a show, you wouldn't want someone unattractive doubling for you. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Any any memories from from Charlie's Angels? Maybe a, a fan might like to hear about in, from any of the stars. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, I doubled all the girls, so of course I knew all the girls. And they were great fun. They really were. Uh, Sarah was just so sweet. All the girls were sweet. Um, They changed a little bit when they got really famous. But then I understand that because everybody wants them. You know what I'm saying? And they don't have any time for themselves. So it's not an easy life being a famous star. Everybody runs after you, like my sister. They'd be outside our home. You know, so you didn't have any privacy. And some of the times it was scary, you know, people would come after them. So um, it, it's just working on Charlie's, the girls were great. And um, we'd laugh a lot, of course. And some of the stunts I did, I remember I, I got hurt on this one show, Charlie's Angels, that we were doing. And I had to jump out of the car way too fast. And my girlfriend and I were both hurt quite badly on it. So the girls ran out, though, and she would run out and hug me and took care of me. It was so cute. So you form a, a, a close girls, and um, we just had a great time together. So it was really a great show to be on for me. You know, all women, what, what more could you ask for? It was fun. 
and and it was a a a, a pop culture phenomenon. I mean, I remember Farrah Fawcett oh, yes. was everywhere, and um, <laughs> I, I believe she was uh, engaged or married to, or well, I guess, I know she eventually married Lee Majors, who was also yes uh, the the biggest male star on on TV with the Six Million Dollar Man, and I, just, I yeah, it was yeah. kind of like uh, the Beatles for the seventies almost. That had to have been very exciting. You don't know at the time when you're doing these shows that they're going to be big, of course. But I seem to have just gathered all those shows. I did Jaws 2. I did Airport 77. I did Charlie's Angels. I did all the top shows at that time. So I was very, very fortunate because, of course, they have residuals and they show them over and over. So that was so beneficial for me to do them. That's great. I probably bought your lunch. (laughs) <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Probably, uh, yeah. Through, through the residuals. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, so with a show like Charlie's Angels, are you freelance or are you contractually uh, assigned a, a project like that? On a couple of shows that I did on Charlie's, they put me on weeklies, but that was seldom done. They wanted to save money. So I'd go and take another show, and that was hard because I wouldn't be available for them, you know, at the time. So um, because they didn't do that, I had to go out and get other which made it difficult. I couldn't just wait around for their calls. So, um, yeah, they just didn't want to put anybody on weeklies. I think I was on weeklies maybe four times, and one of them was when I went to Hawaii, you know, for a couple of weeks, so uh, they rarely put me on weeklies. It was usually dailies, so it, it made it even more hard because I had to find other work and, you know, in between the days that I knew I would be on Charlie, so it would it mm-hmm. made it much easier if I could just be on the weekly, but they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to spend the money, so... Well, um, I guess that's why when Jennings Lang calls and wants you to star in one of his airport films, um, you're going to kind of go for for that opportunity. Um, the airport series yeah. was huge, as, as with many disaster films um, mm-hmm. in the 70s. And this is kind of the, the peak uh, franchise for, for disaster in Airport 77. Now... I like to do what I'm doing here because it reminds me of being a kid. And I mm-hmm. remember being, I have kind of a semi-photographic memory, especially when it comes to movies. I can remember going to the movies. And I remember, this. Is, I think it's the third movie that I, that I saw. I saw Jaws, King Kong, and then Airport 77. And um, I remember being a three-year-old kid in this huge theater at a mall and uh-huh. looking around, and it just seemed like it was just a sea of people. And uh, I remember wow. getting so enthralled in that movie, even as a three-year-old. And uh, it was a double bill. They, they, uh, we'll talk about Burt Reynolds in a moment, but they, they had a sneak preview of Smoking the Bandit after that, too. And uh, uh-huh. I just totally remember that night. <laughs> to this day, I still remember that. So Airport 77 fascinates me. Uh, can you tell me how that came about and just well, what it was like going to the set every day? Um, and you had a, a a league of stars in that as well. So oh, yes. You and, and, you know, that was a, a big show for a lot of reasons. Number one, they didn't have women coordinating. So Universal gave me the job of co-coordinating with Stan Barrett, who was a coordinator ran the the land speed record so um i worked with him but they really didn't let me do that much i was kind of like in training so i hired and hired the people got the doubles hired them for the job but setting up the stunts i did to some extent but Really, he had it all planned out. You know, I really didn't get to do much on that except what I did inside the plane. Um, So that was a big changing point. And we thought it would be great for women because we thought it would open the doors and there'd be more stunt coordinated for women, which really didn't happen, although I, I did get to coordinate a lot of shows. But it really didn't open up for women at that time. 
which was kind of depressing. But on that show, um, yes, it was a big show. Uh, I worked with Dar Robinson on that, a lot of stunt people in that, but a lot of big mm-hmm. stars in that also. So um, it was a hard show because they had all this water coming down on us. And, um, I worked with uh, one of the actors was a, a blind gentleman, Tom Sullivan, I believe his name was. What a, what a wonderful man he was. And it was such a great experience to me because he said to me one day, he said, you know, I don't know what a smile looks like. And oh. I never thought of that. And I said, okay, I said, put your hands on my face and, and feel my lips, how they go when I smile. And it was so cute to be able to speak with somebody that didn't know that because I never thought of it. You know, we don't think of it if you're not blind. But right. that was interesting to me. And he was a great little actor, and that was fun. And working with the big stars, you know, Olivia de Havilland, what an excellent, excellent uh, person to work with because she was so elegant and so, so great and such a pro. So I was lucky in a lot of reasons. There's a big star show, and I got to talk to all of them and, and work with them. And we had a hard job in that, you know, that play with all the water coming in on us. So it it was a hard job. So uh, I guess you play that uh, Beauties in the Eye of the Beholder song all the time. Remember that? Do <laughs> you remember that song? No. That the, uh, Tom, the, the Tom Sullivan... He got like one of the biggest credits, like on the end credits. He gets a full screen "Beauty in the Eye of the oh. Beholder" sung by Tom oh. Sullivan, uh, and it was right oh, at, at the end of the movie. And uh, it, it, and I remember that that scene. Well, obviously, I remember I watched it last night. Uh, but there oh. you are. You you're hanging <laughs> out in the lobby uh, or in the uh-huh. bar, I guess the lounge. Um, right. Uh-huh. You're you're leaning on the piano. You look gorgeous, by the way. Uh, and you've got this blue oh, dress. Sweet. Oh, you yes. got this. You were smart. I don't know if you did this on purpose, but you picked this bright blue dress with pink roses on it. And everybody else is wearing their seventies, uh, you know, beige and brown and green. And you're popping off the screen. I don't know if you've seen it since it's been remastered, but you pop off every time. No, so, like, I haven't. You're you're in the you're in that movie a good I mean you're you're there till the end. I was oh, watching that's it. Oh, funny. Uh, I was watching it last night, rooting for you, hoping you didn't get you know oh, deep six. How but cute. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there how cute. there you are at the very end. And oh, um, that's funny. Wardrobe uh, picks out those clothes, you know. We don't get oh, to choose. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. they did. You, they did. They did. They made you a, a good choice for you. <laughs> but, uh, Thank you. <laughs> but uh, you're 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 in there in the mix with all with all of them. Um, but wow. uh, can you tell me about? I love Jack Lemmon. Can you tell me anything about Jack Lemmon? Oh my goodness, Jack Lemmon. We um, after shooting, we all meet at the bar. I didn't, but I remember Dar drank and he drank with Jack. We we all sat at the bar and they were having a drink and I had a Coke and we were all just laughing so hard because they were very funny. Jack Lemon was very funny and so was Dar. And when they had a couple of drinks, they were even funnier. So it was great fun. We just, I don't know, just did crazy things and spent most of the night there laughing and then we'd have to get up at five in the morning, go to work which we did, of course. And um, I don't know, Jack Lemon was so funny. He was just such a great guy to be around. Just made you laugh all the time, you know. Great actor, mm-hmm. too. So, yeah, that was a great experience, you know, being able to go out with him and stuff. It, it's amazing how versatile uh, Jack, Jack Lemon was because, like, you've got movies oh. like some of my favorites were like The Prisoner on uh, Second Avenue. Um, oh yes. Of course, The Odd Couple. Oh, Save the Tiger. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Um, I think he was nominated not for sure. an Oscar or won an Oscar for that. And 1974 mm. is Save the Tiger. It's a beautiful movie. Uh, unbelievable oh, wow. per- performance. 
And then mm-hmm. in uh, Airport 77, he's kind of doing this heroic thing, which, you know, I think what I've read was is that he was kind of embarrassed because he was in such a role. Um, but uh, hopefully he was happy in, in the end. What about, uh, mm-hmm. I've got a lot of, I have a lot of subscribers uh, that love the James Bond films. And, of course, in Airport 77, there's a James Bond villain. But in this, he's a hero, mm-hmm. Christopher Lee. What was Christopher yeah. Lee like? It, oh, <laughs> he's so not like what he looks like. He's so <laughs> sweet. And, yes, he just looks like he might be a villain, <laughs> you know. And he's sure. so I mean, he is so gentle. He's nothing like his acting is. He's just so, so gentle and sweet and kind and very mellow and very laid back and just a nice man. No, it was, he didn't look like the way he acted. (laughs) He just was (laughs) just a kind, kind man. Yeah, he you know, he played those villain parts all the time, and he was so sweet. It was after I got to know him; it was quite interesting. He did such a great job acting, you know. Sure, um, sure. But also, you, 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 Jimmy Stewart was in that too. You know, I got to work I with was, him. I, I was going to ask because at the end, I think you 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 land on a on a helipad on a on a ship, and I think he's there waiting for you. Is that? Is, yeah, uh, but yes, go ahead. But yes, go ahead. Uh, what what, do you, what can you tell us about oh, Jimmy Stewart? Well, Jimmy Stewart. I mean, you're you're in awe when you listen to him talk. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Sure. He just sure. has that great accent. And he he was very nice to everybody, and um, we spent a lot of time on a big ship out in the ocean there, out of San Diego, and we all got to sit our chairs and, and all sit and talk to each other. So it was great fun. He was more rather a quiet man and and always calling his family and just a really sweet man. Um, loved being around him because his accent. So it was fun. And George now, Kennedy was there too, which was another mm-hmm. fun man, really nice man. Great actors, you know, we were so lucky. There looked to be a lot of uh, a lot of work that was done in a tank. Maybe uh, can you tell me how those sequences were filmed? Where like the compartments flooding and and just where the dangers happening? We just had a, a a big set with the inside of the plane, and they had like thousands of gallons of water up up ahead on top of the rafters where they'd open them up and let all the water come out and it would push all the furniture and everything at us. So it was kind of dangerous, you know. We had to dodge. Well, the piano was in there and, you know, there were a lot of pieces of big furniture that were moved around when they let that water loose. So, yeah, it was a little bit dangerous. Um, So we had people doubling the actors, of course. But I doubled uh, Lee Grant, who is killed when the water takes her out going out the plane. And I think all I did was hold my hand up so you could see my hand as she's going out out the plane. <laughs> but, uh, Lee, Lee, Lee Remick, she, she was something else in that movie. Boy, a lot of fun. <laughs> her oh, yeah. She was, she was a troublemaker. Um, so, uh, but yes, Air Force 77, what a, what a, I always thought it was just a great concept for a disaster film. I guess a pressurized, a pressurized cabin could hold all that. And, you know, it, it's just good, uh, escapism, you know, disaster movie fun. Uh, so anybody uh-huh. out there listening, you should <laughs> seriously watch it. And you wonder if, if you can make it when a plane goes down underwater, you know? Because the cabins are pressurized, so yeah. who knows? <laughs> and that was who a knows? state of the art. That was a state of the art plane, but uh, you know, sure. Yeah. I mean, it would it would yeah. have all that. I never yeah. second guessed it. I just think it's a great thriller. So fun stuff. Boy, when that water comes down on you, it's massive. It's you know, water's so darn heavy, and it just throws everything at you. So it was. Quite an interesting day, or should I say week. You know, something that made that movie even more 
frightening. And I don't know if maybe even Universal uh, were, were thinking, or the producers were thinking about this, but when you were watching Airport 77, you were aware of sharks and you were aware of Jaws. And so, like, people were looking out the uh, the windows. I, I remember as a kid, I was just waiting for Jaws to come, you know, back <laughs> against the, the plane or something. Right. <laughs> so, uh, of course, I'm going to ask you till I'm blue in the face about Jaws 2. <laughs> I, I've okay. probably watched you I've probably watched you uh, be attacked, I don't know untold <laughs> many times um, and I think it's a great sequence it's an iconic sequence uh, I mean it's referenced in the uh, the movie poster um, oh. and, and I think it's 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 an iconic scene in the in the Jaws series. I don't know if you're aware of that, but but it is. And the, I, well, I think people that have a, told me that. Yeah, because it's large... in the beginning. You know, it it really mm-hmm. gets you in the beginning of the movie. So um, it does. Yeah, it's kind of like you're the yeah. uh, you're the Chrissy. You know, the the iconic Chrissy attack at the beginning of <laughs> of, of the yeah. first Jaws. You're you're kind of in that role there. And uh, yes. I I always like what you, you know, what you're trying to do. Or what I always thought was cool is like, yeah, you take the gas canister and you throw it at the shark and you and what have you got? Well, here's a flare gun. So I'll shoot. I mean, you're essentially trying to do what Roy Scheider did at the end of the first Jaws, you know, shooting the air tank. You're using right. what you got. You got you got a gas tank and but it just doesn't work. It's just not working out. And in a panic mm-hmm. state like that, <laughs> which you played so well. I mean, sure. What what would you be doing in that situation with with so much, with this giant shark and you've got, you know, you're gonna. Panic you don't. You and, don't have yeah. time to think about it, right? But to grab that that gas can, you know how heavy those things are. It was metal, and it was full. Mm-hmm. So for me picking it up, I really almost dropped it behind me, not in front of me, because it was so darn right. heavy. And until some of the water came out where I could, you know, level it out, where I could push it forward. But that was a challenge. It was, you know, very fast. Um, I tore my knee up on that show because my foot got caught in one of the boards in the boat. So when that boat turned sideways, my my foot got caught in it. So, um, but no, it, it was, it was fast and furious. And you don't have time to think about anything. It just happens, you know. Right. So. And, and what's, what's great about it is, which we don't get so much these days, is everything that's happening on screen is real. Um, and this is a real object that's attacking you, this mechanical shark. And uh, was it was it frightening to 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 see that shark? Did you did you ever get well, into the moment and really feel like you're oh, being yeah. attacked? Or oh sure, what, I mean that's what, part of acting, you know. That's sure. part of acting is knowing the shark's real, knowing you could be killed. Um, so that's just part of acting. Yes, um, you get yourself into that. Just like when you do a crying scene, you really get yourself into it, you know. You really feel whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're referring to when you're doing that acting job of emotional stress, you remember those times that you've been in that situation and you bring it up into your job. Um, so, yes, it's um, it's different, but... Uh, it works. I I never thought I was a good actress. I, I didn't want to do acting because I said I'm terrible. But when I got the part on Jaws, I think they interviewed 5,000 women for it. So oh, wow. they interviewed all, all over the world. And I was just lucky, you know. But um, I'm very emotional. So I was able to, to do the interview in front of this lady, uh, Miss Fields, I believe it was. She was a big wig at Universal. Uh-huh. And she Burn just loved me. Yeah, she was so sweet to me. And um, she said, she says, you're great. She said, you're great. So, um, 
they called me up the next day and said, you're going to work. And I had already contracted to do nothing. And I had to tell the other show I couldn't do it. So, because Jaws was much bigger than the show I was doing. So, I was, you know, really wanted to do Jaws. So, uh, they basically took you out into the ocean with a, a boat prop, I guess, I guess was the boat anchored the, that, you, that you were on or, or on any type of a um, winch? Or? No, not really. We, you know, we had the uh, down, but, um, and it didn't really move. You know, there were, there were boats around, but not close because we were shooting in the ocean. So you couldn't see anybody. We had to keep them out of the view site. So, um, no, it, it was different working that way because you don't have safety close by. The only thing I could right. do is jump in the ocean, you know, to put my <laughs> fire out. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that, you know, it was interesting the way we set it up. We needed, of course, special effects close by, but they couldn't be because they were, would be in the view of the camera. So, uh, Somehow it so all it, worked, you know. Oh, it definitely worked, and they definitely picked the right <laughs> person for the job. Uh, I oh, mean, so thanks. You, you, your boat was tied down, and then we have mm-hmm. this mechanical shark, and they were were they literally just ramming the boat with the shark? Yes. In fact, the night before somebody moved the boat, where we had practiced with the shark and everything, where it hit the boat perfect. Somebody moved the boat, so the boat was further away. So the shark, or it was closer, I'm sorry, it was closer. The shark, when he hit the boat, it picked the boat and almost turned it over with me in it. It went all the way up on its side and then fell down again, but I almost went over in the boat. It was crazy. Just because somebody had moved the boat. I mean, you you can really see that in the movie. Like, you're you were about to tip over at one point right before you picked up yeah. the gas can. Yeah, so, there uh, were a couple of times. Something else. Now, what was what did the shark, did the shark look like a real shark? Was it threatening to, to um, look at or were you scared of it at all? Not for, no. <laughs> no. No, <laughs> I wasn't. It was kind of phony looking, you know, but Uh-oh. when you see it on film, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Right. But no, in person, the eye didn't look real to me. And at first, I started laughing, and I had to do a crying scene. And I was laughing, and I, I had to come change my attitude really fast. But it was funny to me, and um, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it was it definitely. Uh, it definitely looks. Uh, yeah, it had to be surreal to find yourself. Making a sequel to Jaws, knowing what a big movie that was, and, and being there on that boat with that shark, and just knowing you're going to be in a sequel to, to one of the biggest money makers of all time, that had to have been a surreal experience. And uh, do you Which, have any memories of? Uh, did you meet like uh, Roy Scheider or Lorraine Gary? Any, any of those? Oh, songs? of course. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, Roy Scheider was always on the beach tanning and stuff and he was he was great he was nice um no we had you know we all stayed in the same hotel out in vera beach i believe it was and i don't think the hotel's there anymore it was on an island i think it was why in a hurricane uh yes but uh, we Navarra, all stayed there it's on uh it was on navarra beach and um uh, yes uh apparently that yeah it got wiped out um but yeah. uh, so, but but Roy Scheider, personally, just because maybe it's because I've just seen him kill so many sharks. But he was in so many other great <laughs> movies, like all that jazz. Um, oh yeah, uh, he French, was great. Yeah. French Connection, and uh, oh yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen the Seven Ups, um, which is kind of a spinoff of the French Connection. But if you're interested in stunts, that movie has what I think is the best car chase on film. Um, it's something else. Oh, um, better than maybe Bullet? I, I think it's from the same people that made Bullet, the same production oh, company. Wow. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have to send you that. There's a clip of it on oh, YouTube. I, I want you to watch it. it. 
It's, oh, it's thank it you. is something else. You'll 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 dig it. But uh, Roy oh, Schneider, uh, I got to uh, speak with him a few times on the phone, and, and we talked on the phone quite a bit there. He was a wonderful, wonderfully nice man to me. Um, yeah. But I understood, from what I understand, he did not want to make that movie because it was kind of a sequels were frowned upon back then. But uh, any right. memories about Roy Schein or anything, anything in particular that you could share about about? Oh, the, uh, he was him just a John nice too? man. Yeah, he was just a nice man. I didn't do a lot of uh, shots with him, you know, because mine was just separate. So uh, when I did see him, it was at the hotel we were staying at. We were all there together. So everybody, you know, would go down and have breakfast in the hotel restaurant. And so we'd all talk. And no, he's, he was a very nice man. I remember he had asked us all out to dinner one night. We couldn't go because we worked late. But no, he was just very nice to everybody. You know, there was no no problems or anything. And he, he was kind of cute. It was cute. He was always outside tanning <laughs> with uh, he the was silver what? thing, sorry. you know, outside tanning on the beach. Oh, yes. That's, yes he, he lived for the sun. <laughs> he really yeah, loved it. So it was fun. He apparently picked that up on the, on the first uh, Jaws. But yes, the, oh. real quick, just the reason that I was asking is just like the things I've read and a lot of, I guess there's been a lot of, a lot sensationalized about why he didn't want to do that movie and they make it sound like he was just awful on set. But uh, it sounds like, no. you know, I mean, it sounds like he was, uh, he, you know, a gentleman. No, he was a true or, professional. Yes. People that are your age... They talk to me and they say, you know, when I was a little kid, I wouldn't get in the bathtub because I remember your scene and I was afraid. So people write me into those things. It's so funny. <laughs> oh goodness, it, they, they do, but but it's true. And and that and Jaws too is. Uh, I mean, if I don't see how you can't like Jaws too if you like the first Jaws. Uh, I, uh-huh. Uh, I don't, those other two sequels were a little wobbly, of course, but, but Jaws 2, I mean, back in the day, I remember thinking of that like I'd think of Empire Strikes Back or something. I mean, it was a big, uh-huh. big movie. And, uh, yeah. and that, that scene that you're in is kind of the, in the forefront of your mind as far as, uh, oh. you know, my memory of that movie. Of course, and then you got, you know, the, Rory hanging on the wire at the end, but uh, no, mm-hmm. it's a big, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Oh, thanks, um, thanks, Michael. Sure. Um, now that same year, so you got Jaws two coming out, and uh, that same year you worked with Burt Reynolds, uh, correct? In, oh, in the yeah. end. Uh huh. The end. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. That was a fun show. Dom DeLuise had me laughing from day. One <laughs> day and night we laughed. It, that was a great show to work on with Hal Needham and Burt Reynolds. I mean, how lucky can I get? I'm the only girl on it. And I do the part oh. of the driving person, which I hated. <laughs> I was a teacher, and uh, we did a lot of car stunts and stuff, and it was great. It was a great show. Loved That's working right, on were- it because it was so much fun. You were driving, uh, I believe, a, a granny that was uh, trying to learn how to, to to drive her car, and I believe <laughs> Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise are trying to uh, kill themselves, uh-huh. running into your car, and there's a great car stunt, and uh, you're, you're featured yeah. quite a bit there. That's that's great. That, um, any memories of Burt Reynolds? I, I love watching Burt Reynolds. Uh, oh well, movies. what can They're you just, say about Burt? He was great, you know. Burt Reynolds and Hal Needham together, the best friends, you know, and we just laughed. We just had so much fun, and they always had Dom Deloise on the on the set. So we all would just laugh. I mean, I think that was one of the best shows to work on because it was so much fun. And um, you can't replace that, you know, because a lot of shows are, are really hard to do and very serious, and nobody's having fun, and that kind of show, but not with Bert. 
No, he he had fun people around him, and he, he seemed to always keep the same people. Because I was asked to do Hooper too, but I had torn up my knee, and I, uh-huh. I couldn't walk, so I couldn't do Hooper. But I went on the set, they asked me to come down and visit, so I did do that. So uh, that that was a fun show to work on, the end. Really. And, of course, I was lucky to have a good part, you know. That's right. That's right. Uh, did Did you uh, go on to? I know a lot of stunt work goes uncredited. Did you do any of his other? Because he kind of went in that uh, stunt uh, filled adventure kind of cannonball run and. Uh, oh yeah, race. I was did, asked did, to do cannonball. You? I was mm-hmm. I I missed cannonball because of Jaws. I was set to oh. do cannonball, and I missed it because yeah. of Jaws. But you know what? I'm glad I missed it. I'm well, glad I missed it. You know, like I, like I was saying, it's 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 iconic uh, that, that Jaws yeah. two scene. Certainly, uh, <laughs> thanks. Certainly been with me my my whole life. Um, as mm-hmm. far as Blues Brothers, uh, with of course John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, uh, I know you're <laughs> involved in, in in coordinating some of those stunts. I mean, there's so many car chases and whatnot. It's, Probably hard yes. to pinpoint a, a particular memory, but uh, any any general thoughts about Blues Brothers? Well, of course, it was great working with the actors, and I worked with John Bellucci a lot. I would sit and talk to him, so um, it was wonderful. Uh, the director was bizarre. I mean, uh, we did a lot of dangerous stuff there. People got hurt. And, um, what was scary is when we'd fly through those big, huge plate glass windows, that was real glass. That glass would fly across the mall and stick into concrete pillars. It would actually go into the pillars, the glass. Oh, wow. So you know that when those people are running in front of those cars that hit the plate glass, it's so dangerous, so dangerous. We were so lucky. But... um yeah, well, that was that yeah. was a hard show. It's funny you mentioned the director because, of course, it's John Landis, and he was kind of in his heyday. Yeah. And, and you can tell by the stunts in the Blues Brothers, he was really pushing, you know, what a stunt team could probably do in a movie. And, of course, we all know what ultimately happened on The Twilight Zone with Vic Morrow. Was that shocking yeah. that when, when that news came out or... or did that send kind of a shockwave oh. through the uh, industry uh, that you were in? Oh, of course. I, I had just worked with Vic Morrow, so um, he was a nice, nice man. And for that to happen, I talked to the people that were in it. I talked to one of the guys that were in the helicopters. And it was just too fast and furious, and there were line wires in the way, and they didn't see him. So, no, it, it just all was a disaster, you know. And you can't rush things. And I know John Landis is so emotional and so into his project that maybe he didn't think of things at the time, but I think, you know, stepping back, I think things should have been slowed down a little bit, make sure you had safety, you know. But even on the the show I worked with, uh, Blues Brothers, in the mall. It was crazy. It was just it was just pushing it, pushing the limit to everything. You know, those right. cars were upside down sliding into the glass. Tons of people around. People that weren't stunt people were waivers in it. So we had to worry about them getting hurt, you know. It was crazy. We were lucky nobody was seriously hurt really. Yes. Well, you, you could you can tell with the Blues Brothers, uh, he was really going for it, and and yes, yeah, so I was just wondering about that. So, around the time that you were hearing about Twilight Zone, you were probably in a warm car with a dog attacking it in Cujo. Um, <laughs> yes. In that movie, I just remember my mother and my my sister and uh, myself just being scared to death by that movie. <laughs> Uh, any, any, <laughs> and, and the, that movie, I think, probably is special to you because, I mean, you really resemble Dee Wallace um, yes. quite a mm-hmm. bit. 
And yeah. you're probably in that movie <laughs> probably as much as she is uh, with, yes. with all that, mm-hmm. the attacks and stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. Anything, any memories from, from that with well, uh, Louis T? Um, oh, oh, he was sweet. Oh, he was so sweet. Yeah. He was sweet. The coordinator was Connie Parmesan, and he was so nice. Very mellow people, and it worked so great. It's so much better when everybody's mellow it, Things just work when you have hard stunts to do, when you calm down and quiet and, you know, it works so much better. But on that show, you know, I got to know all the dogs. I worked with five dogs. And uh, when I worked, I trained the dog to go after the toy on around my neck. And he would go after this little mouse. So everything I did, I had it. It was a game. You know, he went for the mouse. And it was tied around my neck. So when I was laying in the car, and I'm in that small car, and there's a console with a brake, and I had to lay on that with my back, so I felt all that. I didn't have a pillow or anything. I just had to lay on it. And then the dog jumps in on me, and he weighed more than me. He weighed like 105 pounds. So he weighed more than me at the time. But the thing of it was, is is we teased him too long, and I could feel the animal. His attitude changed from playing. It was fun to, okay, I want my toy. Now I'm mad. So he started clawing on my chest, and it brought my head up. When he clawed on my chest, it brought my head up, and he was chomping at the same time trying to get the toy. And he hit my nose. He got a part of my nose, and it almost tore all the way off. There was just oh, a piece goodness. of skin that my nose was hanging on. And oh. they rushed me to the hospital. I waited four hours for a plastic surgeon. I had 49 stitches in my nose. But you know what? I could have lost my nose. I would have no nose, just two holes I in my face. I, yep. I, I can totally empathize to what you went through with that. So I guess what yeah, you're telling me, else. So I guess what you're telling me is a, uh, pissed off St. Bernard is much worse than a 25 foot mechanical shark. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. The shark, you know what it might do. The dog, you never know. <laughs> you never know with animals, you know. Uh, I worked true. with that like... lion on Honky Tonk Freeway, and I didn't know the lion. He was new to me. I, I met him the same night I worked with him. They didn't feed him. They scared him with fire extinguishers to make him run after me. And I'm in high heels, doubling an old woman. And I'm throwing raw meat over me to make him run after me, right? And I'm thinking, all he has to do is come up and trip me with his paw. You know, just slap his paw around my ankles and take me down. So I kept thinking that all the time I worked that night. It was crazy. But I I lucked out. He was a good lion. And that was a, a union? Per, uh, <laughs> yes, it was. Like, the, the, it, the way yeah. it fell, just, uh, <laughs> they slung meat on me and hit the lion <laughs> with the uh, fire extinguishers and, yeah, oh, uh, yeah action. It was crazy. <laughs> uh, it was crazy. Wow. It was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. How, you never be... know with those things, you know, and working with animals, you just don't know. I worked with an alligator one time and they had his, his snout all tied up with tape and stuff, but you don't realize the tail's more important than the mouth because the tail flip around and break your bones, you know. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, that, that's another good Lewis Teague movie, Alligator. That's probably what got him the Cujo, <laughs> John. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, creatures, creature feature. Um, oh, he so, likes that funny. You also did uh, Star Trek. I got, I'm going to have to ask about Star Trek. Any any particular memories on that? Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Um. Yeah, we did a whole uh, a thing. I had a costume on that. I was a skimpy costume, may I say, and it had lights all over it. Oh my! I don't know why. I always end up with the jobs where I'm not wearing hardly anything, and doing fight scenes. Come on. So anyway, think, uh, we had all this fight. Uh, Gene, I, 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 <laughs> yeah? I think William Shatner was the costume designer on that film. <laughs> oh, gosh. Of course, the on joke. all of them, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, 
clones. He on. probably thought you <laughs> were just joking. Uh, is that ever but, a problem? And can I just ask: is, is, that, is that a problem being an attractive woman, being in these situations on, yeah. on film sets? We've all heard the the horror stories. Is that yeah. a problem? Like, do you get approached a lot by of stars course. or people on set? And, how do you deal with not that? Not so much the stars. I mean, I did a couple of the stars, but not so much. It's more the different different people on the set, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. It, it wasn't easy. easy in those days, you know, because they could get away with a lot. So in those right. days, no, I, I have a picture of a coordinator who was taking a picture with me, and we were just arm in arm, and when they started to shoot it, all of a sudden he grabs my breast. And I've got it on camera. He was the coordinator. I worked for him. So it was so discouraging. And I was so angry, but you can't do anything. What are you going to stand there and yell at him? You know what I'm saying? You have to laugh it off or you're not going to work. I can under, uh, certainly understand that being a, a difficult situation to be in. Uh, now... What what happened in Star Trek Three? I understand you were in um, you were in a fight scene in a bar, right? Right. Mm -hmm. We blocked it all out and rehearsed it and stuff, and and I guess they just left it out. I guess it, you know they didn't want it or whatever the reason was. I don't know, but um, oh, okay. I only worked I think two days on it. But okay. that happens, you know. You'll do do yeah. a big fight scene or something, and they'll just you know use part of it. Yeah, and I think they they might have even reused that scene in a in in a later picture because I know there's a fight in the oh. bar with a, a oh. female in Star Trek V, the one that William Shatner directed actually, uh, the the final oh, frontier. Funny. There's a there's a fight in a bar and uh, between Kirk and a female creature, and I wonder if that was maybe recycled for that. But oh, uh, interesting. But all the same, that's got to be awesome being on set on a Star Trek film. Uh, yeah, the director was... Uh, Leonard Nimoy. The act yes. Oh, my God, what a nice man. And <laughs> when he, he was like Clint Eastwood. When he said action, it was quiet and calm, and he was wonderful to work with. Another director that was so great to work with, you know. Him sure, and Clint Eastwood, sure. a lot of them were so nice. Now, I've got to ask, I wasn't aware you worked with Clint Eastwood. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what film? Oh, my God. It was out on the streets where a car hits a fire hydrant. Dirty Harry? Like a Dirty Harry film, probably. I think it was, yeah, I think it was one of the Dirty Harrys. Yep, yep. You know, I don't even know. I mean, the films, Probably there's so know. many of them. A lot of them like, I don't even have credit for, you know. A okay. lot of shows uh, I did for some reason. Okay, so uh, Clint Eastwood, so he's just very, very cool on set. Yes, very, very. And when he said action, he, like, whispers it. It was, <laughs> he's so awesome, just an awesome action. man. <laughs> yes, action. You could barely hear him. <laughs> so you had to listen. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else gets quiet, too, because he's quiet. It's, it was great working with him. Just great. It's really amazing. It's, it's really amazing how he's evolved as a filmmaker. I mean, there's so many, so many great movies that he's made. I watched oh, uh, I know. Play Misty for me the other night. Oh yeah, oh, that movie is just scary. She, she, she's scary. <laughs> yeah, uh, scary. Well, uh, moving on. Uh, like, like I was saying before, a lot of folks that subscribe my channel are James Bond fans, and uh, I, again, you, you're reaching pinnacle of what I perceive to be the the, the stunt world, being in a James Bond film. Uh, of course, you're in A View to a Kill. Uh, in yes. 1985, um, there was a famous fire uh, fire truck chase in San Francisco on those yes. silly uh, roads. And uh, uh -huh. what, what can you tell us about uh, a Well, <laughs> I was so lucky. 
I mean, that had to be for me the epitome of anything I ever wanted to accomplish in the business is work in one of the James Bond movies because they don't hire you unless you're good, you know, first right. of all. And second of all, I was from America. I wasn't from England. So I just really was, I couldn't believe I was working the show, first of all. And then I got to do a part. I got to double the lead actress. Um, mm-hmm. I did a lot of car work on the streets, too. So I just didn't do where we're in the back of a truck and an explosion takes off the back of that uh, truck, the camper, while the ladder sure. hits it. It's an explosion mm-hmm. that blows it off, and it's right next to our heads. So can you imagine how loud it was? And then we had to pop up and do an acting job. So I, I did my acting job on that. And uh, then I got time doing car work on the streets with uh, Remy Julian, one of the famous French drivers. And yes, work with yes. him was awesome, just awesome. He was incredible. So, no, we were so yeah. fortunate. Remy uh, Julian, so uh, the the French and his French driving team. I mean, that in the eighties. I mean, he was a fixture on it, all of those films and did some really yeah. amazing stunts. Yeah. So, okay. He had his sons and, working with him, and it was really inner him, really. Awesome. Any memories of uh, now? I know you're you're coming out of the ocean in in some scuba gear. As the oh, uh, the yeah. Russian agent that uh, okay. that Roger Moore uh, intercepts on, on shore, any memories of working with Roger right. Moore? He's one of one of my favorite bonds. Oh, he's oh, honey, he's the most wonderful man ever. He and him looks just like him, and he was so great to work with. He he comes up to me and says, "Hi, I wanted to introduce myself on Roger Moore," and I said, "Well, thank you. I'm Gene Coulter." I said, "I know who you are." <laughs> How could I not? <laughs> and I had to, um, <laughs> I had to uh, flip him, and my wetsuit had to come off at the same time to show that I was a woman. Do you know how right. hard it is to get a wetsuit off when you flip somebody and it has to come off? It, it was so hard. We used Vaseline, we used powder, we we tried everything to get that wetsuit just to flip off at the same time. It, it finally worked, but was it challenging? You know, Jane, it's, it's, funny, it's funny you ask me that because I had this uh, incident over at the Publix uh, grocery store parking lot, and, and that exact same uh-huh. thing happened. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try it sometime. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> and that was a last minute thing too. I mean they didn't even give me time to have plan it, you know what I'm saying? The director just said sure. you know, we've got to make sure that they see it's a woman, so you've got to get that wetsuit off. And I'm saying, But it sticks to you. You know how tight they are. It sticks mm. to you. So we right. rehearsed it like I don't know, four times and it worked fine, but but that was a challenge, yeah. you know. On a big feature, you don't hurt. want to waste their money. Sure. Uh, John Glenn, the director on that movie, he, he kind of reminds me of maybe having a Clint Eastwood type approach where just kind of yes. no nonsense. Yes. And and most of the crew was from England, and they were so so nice, so, so very nice. I was so, so you, uh, lucky to work. So you worked with Roger Moore. And, um, yes. Now, I have to ask, one of my favorite Bonds is Timothy Dalton, and I know he appeared on Charlie's Angels. Would you perhaps um, work with him on that? I probably met him. I just don't remember, but I'm sure I met him on it. Yeah, okay. I was around most of the time. So, Just another day at the office. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't know who anybody is. <laughs> right, that's true, I mean, that's true. He was just some guy, you know. Yeah, and I grew up in the business. I grew up in the business, so I'm not impressed with anybody. To me, they're just like friends. Right. Just like somebody that does a different job in the office, probably. Exactly. Uh, Exactly, yeah. Do you you have any any favorite films or any favorite actors that that are just 
any like if 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 you're gonna watch uh, you know if if, you, if you're well, gonna watch three I'm, movies, what what would you choose? Anything or do you watch a lot of films? Well, I I watch some films. But when I was working, I never watched anything because I was working. So I didn't watch my stunts. I probably not most of my stunts. But there are some some actors and actresses I work with that really impressed me, like Anthony Quinn was one of them. Uh, oh, wow. Baxter. Ann Baxter was such a great actress. And I watched her close up do a scene, a crying scene. And everybody was crying. She was so, so good. So, oh. yeah, and and I love working with Roger Moore. He was so kind to me and so nice. And his son, too, made me feel like I'd known him forever. So that was fun. Um, and I worked with Elvis Presley, who, who my sister ate as a publicity thing with. But I I got to talk with Elvis all day, and he would sing to me, and he danced to me, and, he was such oh, wow. fun. Um, let's see. Oh, I mean, there's been so many. You know, I've been very fortunate through my life to work with a lot of big stars and to get to know them. And was the you know, uh, it, it, was the Elvis? Uh, you're, you're meeting Elvis. Was that when he was making his films in the '60s? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. I think my first stunt job was 1962. And it was on Ironside, well, one of them. It was on Ironside. I had to dive into the San Francisco Bay in Sausalito, where all the houseboats are. And the water was not nice. Dirty water. 30 degrees. November. Freezing cold. And I had a skimpy little teeny dress on that when it got wet, it was matte jersey. It shrunk up to my underwear. And I had to Goodness. swim out and save a guy on fire and bring him back in. And unfortunately, we had no electricity. The wardrobe trailers were closed down. We had no heat, no nothing. So they rinsed me off with a hose from the fire truck, and it seemed warm to me. So that was quite, a, quite an experience that I wouldn't want to do over again, <laughs> you know. Right, right. And. And another thing I did for fair, I think I jumped in the ocean, probably 30, 40 foot jump to water. And I'm wearing uh-huh. wool, wool sweater, wool hat. And when wool gets wet, it gets really heavy. And I had to swim. So even picking up my arms was a chore, you know, to try to swim with it on. So I've had a lot of neat experiences. <laughs> So any, uh, that's one of them. Any, is, is, do you have a, a a stunt that you're most proud of, or and also a stunt that you regret? Well, I think the stunt that I really regret is when we jumped out of the car on Charlie's Angels, and the mm-hmm. man driving, the stunt man driving, he just could get it together. I don't know what his problem was, but he was supposed to go 10 miles an hour, ended up going 40 miles an hour, and we jumped out of these cars. We could barely get out because it had suicide doors on it. So getting out of the car was a problem. I got out of the car, but it was just a total wreck, just a total wreck. I had a concussion. My girlfriend had a concussion, so it was bad. Oh. It was it was not nice, but we went to the hospital, came back, and, and finished shooting after that. So that was one I didn't wow. like. Um, another one I worked on, some dub shows, I worked on a show, and I had to do a high fall, and mm-hmm. I was working with an actor. So he was a method actor. So when he had to hit me, he really hit me. And I... He hit me so hard, and he had a hold of my arm, and he jerked my shoulder out of the socket, and then I, I ended up doing a high after that. So it was all in all terrible. So working with me- method actors doing stunt work doesn't work. <laughs> so, no, that was a bad yeah. day. <laughs> um, Where's the St. Bernard you know. when, you, when you need him? Um, oh yes, yeah. absolutely, my friends. <laughs> so, uh, would you 
would you would you say Jaws two is that the one that you you kind of reflect most on or? Well, it was different, uh, you know. It was different, but I, I like a lot of shows I've done where I had to uh, climb out of a boat and up a ladder into a helicopter. I did a lot of helicopter stuff, hanging off the helicopters and things like that. I enjoyed that. I loved oh, wow. uh, doing work with the copters. Um, I don't know. There's, you know, so many different things that I've done that it's almost hard to remember them, you know? Sure, sure. Um, well, let's see. I'm not, we, we don't have to get into it, but I think it's really cool that you were in, uh, you worked on Better Off Dead. But uh, I guess with that, the name of that movie, maybe there's a point where you just go, you know what? I've done my stunt work. This is too dangerous. Uh, maybe it's time to do something else. Did you, did you when you decided to kind of shift gears in, in life and, and stop stunt work, was there a, a stunt that contributed to that or anything that contributed to that? Well, uh, no, no. The reason I stopped is because I was blacklisted. So really? um, that's the reason I stopped. And I lost everything. I lost my big home I had built, my father had designed. I lost my home. I had a, uh, I started a camera car company, which is still going mm-hmm. today, and it's the biggest in the business. But I designed the cars. I financed them and put them on the road, and they're doing great. So I lost everything, though. I lost the house I built. I lost my camera car company. Um, mm. So, no, it was devastating for me because when... I worked 300 days the year before, and I worked 12 days the next year. You knew I was blacklisted. So, uh, and and I never could recover from that. I just couldn't recover. You were you blacklisted, but, but with, with like, was there like a, um, inappropriateness or something that happened? Yes. Or? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. They asked me to go to their room with them, and I said no, thanks anyway. And then the next day, they had me running up to the car and another girl jumping in and doing the car work. But I had taken Uh, the job and turned down another job because of the car work and because it was the lead actress. So I took the job thinking it would be a great show for me. But in the end, it was the end of my life, really, you know, because I ended up, I, I couldn't work. I couldn't get a job. Nobody was calling anymore. And some of the guys say, well, why did you call me and ask for work? I said, I never called and asked for work. I never had to. And I had heard one of the wives had told me that the men got together and said, no, we're going to blacklist her. And uh, if we go to court, we're all going to lie and tell all sorts of stories about her. So, no, they, they really they really did a... A, a bad thing, you know, mm. and it wasn't fair. I didn't do my whole life in everything I worked for for 20 years because of that. I didn't deserve that. I, I worked hard. I did probably one of the best jobs the women could do at the time, the hardest jobs, and I never gave anybody any trouble. I never went out with anybody in the business. Uh, I never drank. I never did drugs. I was a good, I was a good person, you know. So for me, it was devastating, just devastating. Oh. And I still haven't recovered. I'm still, you know, struggling. So it's been challenging. You know, I, when you I, don't deserve I it. it, it's hard to understand. I, I I can totally relate to what you're saying. I mean, I know, I'm well aware that 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 men can misbehave, but just on a human level, just sometimes you'll go into things with your best intentions and you'll try your best and you'll give your all Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. things just don't still, things just don't work out and and things don't, uh, and you can try with the best intent and just still bad things can happen to you. And I grapple with that myself sometimes. Um, But I think the great thing is, in both of our cases, is we're moving on. We've moved forward, and definitely sounds like you, uh, you know, landed on your feet and 
from all mm-hmm. indications that I see, uh, you, you look like you're in the best of health, and uh, <laughs> you look like you live a, a great, rich life. And I understand you were out <laughs> hiking earlier, and oh, so yeah. we got to we got to move on and 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 take our oh, looks. Yeah. But uh, oh but, yeah, uh, you don't look backwards, right? You can't change backwards. You can't change anything. So why even bother to look backwards unless you want to look from it? But I didn't learn anything from that. Um, as far as healthy, I've fought cancer all my life. I just had eight surgeries this year. I started out at 19 uh, having a total hysterectomy, so I couldn't have children. Luckily, I had two already. But, um, no, I've struggled with cancer all my life. Uh, still am, so it's been challenging, you know. Sounds like you, you're, you've you been able to, to fight it off. Uh, what what yes. Any advice for anyone that might be facing well, a similar situation? Well, now I'm looking at it and what I would have done. I started juicing and just doing green drinks because I thought that would work. But they wouldn't do the test to see if the cancer was going away. So I had no way of knowing, and finally I gave up. But I never did radiation. I never did uh, uh, all the things they want you to do. I couldn't take the drugs. So I had the surgery. I had two mastectomies. And uh, that's been challenging, too, because I got infections in my blood and um, almost died from that. So it's just been one thing after another. But if I were to do it all, all over again... I've learned that juicing is the only way to get through it. If you juice, hmm. you juice right. because it's pure, clean, you know, in your body. Sure. You're not taking in the cookies, the sugar, the junk. Sugar feeds cancer. So now you're juicing. Um, uh, you're you're juicing vegetables. Yes, vegetables and fruits, of course. Yeah, everything, carrots. Mm-hmm. And just everything. You can juice everything. Uh, there's so many different recipes. But no, I've learned that that's a way to cure a lot of diseases, is your diet. What you sure. put in your body, you know? You ever do really fasting? what you put in your body. You no, do I don't fasting? do that. <laughs> no. Part, pardon me? I've, 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 I've uh, experimented with, with juice fasting. Like you know, where you're just drinking juice, basically, and uh, I oh, watched yeah. that. What was uh-huh. that? That documentary that came out a few years ago uh, with the Australian guy, um, ju- just juiced for like three months or something. He lost like a hundred pounds. Juice for life. But uh, uh, oh, fat, uh, fat, sick, and nearly dead. That's the name of it. Fat, sick, and nearly dead. So uh, if you watch wow. that, you're going to try juicing because <laughs> this guy like uh, totally transformed yeah. himself. My best friend is the top Canadian stuntman, probably one of the top stuntmen in the world, I think. And he's juicing, and that's all he's doing is juicing. And he runs every day, and he's in top shape now, and he's 62. So so what are some of your favorite things to juice? Well, there's uh, carrots and oranges. There's Just everything. I mean, avocado and garlic. I mean, there's so many recipes. I love peaches and carrots and, uh, you know, mango and kale. Kale with orange and mango and carrots. And it's wonderful. I mean, there's Mm -hmm. so many recipes out there. You know, anything you do is, is beneficiary to you. So I'm just into everything. You know, I'm just. I was juicing years ago, but now I've really gone back because my friend in Canada is helping me because he's doing it. So, um, but he's read the books about how how it stops cancer juicing. So I'm really right. into that now. And right. all diseases, whether it's diabetes or what it is, really. Yes, for all indications, is is, is sugar is is the true enemy. Processed sugar. Yes. Yep, for um, sure. So, uh, as we wind down here, and I don't want to uh, miss this topic in case there are any women listening. But again, you're 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 very uh, um, 
beautiful woman. And do you have any oh, beauty you. tips for for any women out there that uh, you know? How, how do you how how have you lived a life <laughs> doing these stunts and being set on fire? How how have you done that and managed to stay a beautiful woman? Oh, how sweet you are. Well, I think that what you put in your body really counts. And I've never drank. I never smoked. I never did drugs. I've always eaten healthy. Um, So I think that that really helps. And I think exercise every day is most important. And I've never used makeup except eye, eye stuff. And I just, I don't know, I just never used makeup. At work, you know, you go to work and they they put stuff on you and you don't like it. <laughs> so at home, I don't wear any makeup. And I think that what you put on your body goes into your body, you know. So right. I just, I'm, I'm just pure and natural. I just think that uh, the simpler it is, the better off you are. But definitely what you put in your body and how you exercise is top thing for me. Great. Well, that's great. Well, I've taken up so much of your time today, and I really oh. have enjoyed speaking with you. Um, oh, you're so and I, nice. I genuinely think you're a, you're a very inspiring individual, and uh, I hope this mm. will reach a lot of people and they can learn more about you. I think you'd be a great topic for a documentary or a book or something. Or at least this. I, it, I think you've got a oh, great story. You are. Thank you. I had signed a contract to do a movie by myself, but it fell through. The producers didn't get the money, so I've been things come through yet. But um, maybe one day, I think it, it would be good for a woman to know what they can do. You know, because you really can do anything you put your to, and I think women they know that. Because they're intimidated by men. Men can do everything, but, you know, there's lines drawn that, oh, a woman shouldn't do that. But that's not true. If you set your mind to it, you can do anything you want to do. You just have to Mm -hmm. work hard, though. I do know that. You have to work hard. I did stunt work, but you know what? I took a thousand lessons of anything I could possibly do, whether it was hang gliding or Anything. You know, I could do everything. Roll, ice skate, swimming, whatever. I all because I practiced and learned my craft so I could. So that's important for a woman to know she can do it, not just sit back and be discouraged. You know, she can do anything she sure. puts her mind to. Well, it seems like there's a, a void out there as, as far as a, a good role model. For, for women and it seems like it seems like right now like Hollywood's trying to make a lot of women like characters in movies and whatnot more like men uh and, and uh-huh. what's interesting about your story is you've you've been this inspiring person and you you've taken these risks in your life and you've maintained your your femininity you know you haven't mm-hmm. sacrificed your identity as a woman in order to go out into the, these worlds uh, that that men dominate, stunts and, and filmmaking, and, and you've you've managed to keep your self respect and and your your femininity, uh, and I think that that's I think more women need to look for you know obviously I'm not a woman I don't know but I think I think uh, mm-hmm. I just think you'd be a great uh, role model for for a lot of women out there. Uh-huh. That, that that want to maintain being a woman, but don't want to yes. become a, a man. You know what I mean? Right. No, you can do both. You definitely can do both. You don't have to be masculine to do stunt work. And, uh, you know, you definitely can do both. You can still be a beautiful lady and still go hit the ground, you know? <laughs> so Right. And you don't have to be masculine to be a uh-uh. hero. No, that's, uh, that's exactly. what I was trying to say. A lot of things now are so sexual. All the hype mm-hmm. is, you know, the less clothes you can wear, the the better you are. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, direct I, I, women into doing something for themselves, not just being on a. 
calendar. Right, or 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 just filling a man's shoes in a movie, you know? Yeah. You yeah. Have, like, like, like these great characters, obviously. We've had, like, uh, Sigourney Weaver and Alien, you know, uh, Linda Hamilton and Terminator, those kind of, those kind of roles. Those women were still women, you know, and then yeah. they were still heroic. And it seems like we, we might need to get back to that in films, but it's, it is a cynical I time. Agree. And uh, I don't think they make them like they used to. Um, You're right, Michael. As far as movies, but uh, we we have great movies to look back upon, and you're certainly a big part of them. And, oh, uh, how I've sweet certainly, you are. Thank you. Again, enjoyed speaking with you, and I hope we can stay in touch. And uh, and uh, as far as uh, anyone out there that might want to learn more about you, uh, I know you're on Facebook. Um, yes. Maybe they can mm-hmm. find you there. Anything we can plug yeah. for you? Uh, oh, okay. No, I don't have my book yet, so. I have nothing, you know, right now. I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens. <laughs> Getting in shape. <laughs> there you go. Well, I've really enjoyed talking with you, and I hope you'll stay in touch with me and keep me posted on your recovery with what you're dealing with oh. there. And uh, Oh, thanks, um, honey. Thank you. I hope anyone out there uh, listening will look into Jean Coulter and learn more about oh. uh, her stunt work. She's certainly uh, an inspiring figure more people need to know about and hopefully we'll see that book soon oh yes i hope so hey thank you so much michael thanks for your kindness and you were great thank you so much it's really you know quite a compliment so i appreciate it well it's, it's an honor to talk to you and you take care <laughs> thanks you too bye michael thanks bye Jean.